welcome to my channel. I am Andrea and this is Beyond the Pink Door and today's video is a sew along to make this cardigan. So I showed this fabric in one of my recent vlogs and I decided to make to do a sew along while I made it. So this is the Pattern Scout Lulu cardigan and here's just the line drawings. So you can see that view A at the top there has a bottom band and it has a zip to close it and version B has snap fasteners and a peplum at the end. Now I've made this cardigan twice already. So I've made version A, this one here. So this is made out of a lovely brush back sweatshirting fabric. It's got the band on the end and I've actually put snap fasteners on it. So this is a really, really pretty one, really cozy. And I've made version B as well with the peplum on the end. And again, I've put the snap fasteners. I'm just not a fan of the zip, so I decided to put the snap fasteners. And as you can see, I put the snap fasteners on this one as well. Now, initially I thought I didn't have snap fasteners to match, but when I looked a bit closer into my stash, I found these ones and they work out really lovely. So this is a really clever pattern. I, I, I very much <laughs> really like this one. It has a front center panel and a back center panel. And then very cleverly, the side panels are joined. So this is all one piece of fabric and it's got shoulder patches. So you can just see my stitching there and it's the same at the back. And the sleeve has a cuff version and view B has a hem version. So yeah, really, really lovely make. Um, I've top stitched each of them. So I top stitched the other two and then I used my cover stitch on this one yesterday. So it has a huge range of sizes. It goes from size zero up to size 28, which is a bust size of 31 to 54. And as well as having that broad range of sizes, it also comes in four cup sizes. So it comes in B, C, D and E. So really, you're going to get a good fit on this cardigan, no matter what. And there's no full bust adjustments or anything needed. It's all there done for you. It's absolutely brilliant. So it comes in the universal pieces that you need, which is the sleeve, obviously, the band, the cuff and the centre back and the collar and the shoulder patch and then you get another set of patterns for either the B, C, D or E cup. So brilliant. <laughs> Originally I made a B cup and then in this version I made a C and it fits so much better. So when it comes to deciding on my size I have the option to have a look at my body measurements and I also have a really comprehensive set of finished garment measurements. So all your questions are answered in these two charts. It's just so good. So I personally measured up to a 10 on the bust, a 12 on the waist and an eight on the hip. Now the eight, the, the hip doesn't really come into it because it's it's kind of a cropped cardigan anyway. So I just went by the bust to be fair. And when I looked at the finished garment measurements, the 10 was perfect for me. So even though the 10 was perfect, I decided to size up into a 12 because coming into autumn now, and it's just getting that bit chillier, it's perfect for cardigan weather. And if I was going to wear this during the summer over maybe a light vest top or uh, say a t-shirt dress, I would make the size 10 because it's a really nice close fitting cardigan in your size. But just for winter, I would prefer to have the option to maybe wear this over, say, like, a, you know, a, a short sleeved jumper or something that little bit thicker. So I just wanted to have that extra room in it. So I've gone for the size 12. Now, in terms of pattern pieces, they're all really, really well marked. There's plenty of notches. There are a few places that I feel there was a notch needed, but I have pointed that out during the construction. So each pattern piece comes with a 
direction of greatest stretch arrow, which is really, really important. It's got a grain line and yeah, lots of lots of notches, but I have talked about them during the sew along. I've probably mentioned the word notch far too often. <laughs> so the center front piece is for both the snap fastener and the zip version. So basically, if you want to use the snap fasteners, you cut along this line. And if you want to use the zip, you cut along this line. So obviously this piece here gives you the overlap for the snap fasteners. So I've made version A with the bottom band and the cuffs, but I've added the snap fasteners. So I had to make one alteration to my pattern to accommodate that which I didn't make in one of my other versions, and I'll show you that. So it was a little addition to the bottom bend. I had to add on just that little bit of extra width here, just to accommodate the fact that I'm doing the snap fasteners with this. So just basically the very same width as the overlap. Now, I didn't do that when I made this other version. And when I was putting on the bottom band, I just couldn't understand why it wouldn't fit. Now there's not as much stretch in this fabric as there is in this. So I just could not stretch out the bottom band to it. So this wouldn't be the most ideal fabric basically for this cardigan, but it fits. It doesn't, it doesn't really have quite enough stretch. So what I had to do was I added in a piece to the bottom band because I basically squeezed this cardigan out of a meter. There was nothing left to cut another bottom band. So I added in a piece at the back. So I added in quite a bit just to make like a design feature out of it. And I put a label on it. So I think that covered over my mistake very well. So and we learned from our mistakes. So this time I added it to the pattern. Now, so I've all my pattern pieces cut out and I've also cut out some interfacing with this guide. So this interfacing is just for down the front for behind where the buttons or the snaps or your zip goes. And the next very important job is to mark all of the notches. So you'll see all the back pieces have a double notch. So that includes the side back or the centre back, the side piece and the sleeve. So wherever you see a notch, notch the notch. And what I do is just a little snip into the seam allowance. And the seam allowance on this is very clearly marked on all the pattern pieces, which I really like. So it's a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So it's designed to be fully made on your overlocker. So wherever you see the notches, like here and here on the front, very importantly here on the bodice side piece, so you have your double notch, your single notch, and here's your shoulder patch, double notch, single notch. So if you didn't have the pattern piece pinned onto this, you'd know that double notch is for the back and this single notch is for the front. And then this is another very important one because that shows the top of where the sleeve is going to go in. So that aligns up with that. And again, you can see the double notches towards the back. So I'm going to go ahead and mark all my notches and I'm going to take them. And just before I take off the pattern pieces, I just lay them out like this just to show you how it's jigsawing together. So. Here's the bodice side panel and there's the front. And you can see the notches there match up. And then the same here at the back, the notches match up. And just thought I'd point this out because when you put the pattern pieces together here, you can see that this line matches up, but you would look at this and think, that's actually not going to fit in there. It looks like there's loads of excess fabric and the same here at the back, but when you take into account the seam allowance and the little bit of easing to fit it in, it will fit. So you can see why it's really important as well to match your notches, because if you started pinning this together here, you'd probably get to the end and have a load of excess down here. So once we pin in at the notches, 
this will all fit into place. So I'm almost ready to sew. I have my Jersey needle in, so I'm using one of these, brand new needle, and I have changed the thread on my overlocker, my cover stitch machine, and I've done a little test run on some of the fabric. I am going to use the lightning bolt stitch on my sewing machine. So I'll just show you how that actually works on my machine. So this is my sewing machine. It's the Husqvarna Viking 690Q and the stretch stitch, which I call the lightning bolt stitch, is here at number two. And by default, the sewing machine puts the needle over into the left hand position, which is really, really handy. So this is a self tensioning sewing machine. So I can choose what type of fabric I use and it chooses the size of the stitch. So I have it set to stretch medium and then that automatically tells me which foot to use and it automatically ch changes the width and the length. And I'm using this foot, which is B, which is going against what the machine is telling me. And I'm doing that because it has little markings here, which I find very handy for positioning my seams. So I've just put the tape measure underneath just to show you that one, two, three is three eighths of an inch. And I find that the sewing machine sews here at this line. So if I put the edge of my fabric along this line here, that keeps my sewing in the seam allowance. So I'm going to start by pinning my four seams together. So I've got the front seam and I have the back seam. And I am going to take particular care of my notches. Again, I can't go on about these notches enough. So I'm going to start with these two. So we have the middle panel and a front. I'm just going to pop these out of the way. What I like about this fabric as well is that it has a definite front and back. So it just makes it easier to put things together. So again, here we go with the notches. Pin those two notches together. And then this is just the little piece that looks like it's not going to fit together. But I promise you it does. So between the two notches, you can see fits in beautifully together. So they're the only two pins I'm going to put in. And I'm going to put one here, here at the beginning. I find it easier not to put pins in where I have to do a bit of manipulation. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to pin, I think I'm going to pin all the way across and then at least I can just sew all the way across. I'm all ready to pin or to sew my four seams together. So I'm all pinned together. So it doesn't look like I've used many pins, but I actually don't use many pins. I particularly pin those notches and I use my fingers really to manipulate everything. And they've got very short seams anyway, so they don't need a huge amount of pins. And I've pinned it together in such a way that I will be sewing on the side panel on each of them. So that's where the little extra manipulation and the little extra easing comes into place. So I'm going to start and sew my four seams using, using my stretch stitch. And the good thing about the stretch stitch is that it goes quite slowly, so it gives you lots of time to keep your seam allowances or your seam edges together and get your easing into place. Right, so I'm here at my ironing board. I have all my seams sewn. And the next thing I'm going to do while the iron is on, I am going to put my interfacing here on the, the button part. So I don't use steam for this. I just 
press down the iron and I'm also going to press all my seams to one side. So I'm going to top stitch these with the cover stitch machine, that's why I don't have them overlapped. And I'm going to press each seam towards the front and towards the back because that's where I want my cover stitching to go, on top of that seam. So I'm going to go and do that. And definitely don't avoid putting on that this piece of interfacing. This is just really, really important. It keeps the button band, or the snap band, or your zip, it keeps it stable when you're doing that part. So I've all these sewn, or sewn, I've them all ironed. And now I am going to cover stitch all these seams. Right, so I'm here at the cover stitch machine. I've actually taken out the right hand needle, so I just have two needles. I had thought about taking out the middle one, but yeah, I took out the right one, so I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I've done a test and I like the distance between the two of them. So I've just started and I am positioning the edge of my seam along one of these little guides here and I'm also looking at it where the needles go down as well so I'm just going to take my time. It's going to be far from perfect but this is a learning experience for me so Taking my time going around the curve, hoping for the best. I never quite know how far to the edge I should go. definitely not my finest work there on the curve. No, that is, that is on the back. Oh God. What would you do with that? Would you unpick that and do it again? Is it easy to unpick? Hmm. Okay, I'll have a go at another seam and see how that goes. Okay, so that was fun. I think that was some of the worst sewing I've ever seen in uh, my entire life. <laughs> so I unpicked. Well, first of all, I did another seam, which was just as cat as the first one. And then I tried again. I did the four seams, making the long story short. I unpicked the four cover stitch seams then. So what I did was I put the third needle back in. And in hindsight, if I just wanted two rows, I should have taken out the middle needle. And that would give the width then to cover over the seam on the inside. So this is what it looks like now. Oh, I always go to the wrong side. So it's all, it's quite neat on the inside. And yeah, this one is actually, so this is far better. Oh God, this one is actually really, <laughs> oh, this one is quite good. Oh, I'm impressed with myself. That's very good. I think there is one wibbly wobbly one and I think it's, oh yeah, it's a little bit at the front, of course, typically. So there it is, but I'm not unpicking again. Um, 
yeah, I was sitting here thinking, what will I actually do? And then I thought, no, I can't, I can't look at that. My mother taught me how to sew and I actually don't think she really liked sewing because when I got good enough, she stopped. <laughs> And I used to make her clothes, which was great. And I remember particularly when I was, I think I was only about 12 and I was making myself a jacket with a shawl collar and where the collar came into the front here, I had awful difficulty getting it to look neat. And she made me unpick it and unpick it and, you know, unpick it to the point where I just lost interest in making it. <laughs> And I kept saying to her, oh, do I really need to unpick it? Like, I think I was completely threadbare with the corduroy fabric I was using. Can you imagine all the unpicking? And I probably was stitching it with too small a stitch as well. So, yeah. And I remember my father saying, do you know what, Andrea? You know yourself. If something's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And that's actually really, that has stuck with me. So if ever I look at something and go, do you know what? I'm not happy with that. And I'm going to really like this cardigan. So... Yeah, it's worth, it was worth unpicking and worth doing well. So I'm going to take a little break because as I was growling at the cover stitch machine and my own inability to sew in a straight line, my stomach was growling as well. So I'm, I'm starving. So I think a pizza is going to be in the oven and I will see you after.